Exactly, Pete, because I do uh, c plan my content for live videos. Not all of them. Yes. You, you may notice that I am live twice a week consistently, once with you and then once on Fridays. And then there's many times in between that it'll just be impromptu type stuff. Uh, this week I was in Minnesota, David Knox Productions, recording some stuff. And I'm like, man, while I'm here, this guy's an industry like veteran, been around. Absolutely. And I'm like, Phew. he's like, you got to do a live, Jay, man? I'm like, I am now. As soon as I pulled my phone, I was like, let's do it. And so that was fun. But what I do look at, and this is where those of you, if you're on Clubhouse or you're in a lot of those real estate groups that have tens of thousands of people, the best way to curate content, and it depends on who your audience is. Like Jeffrey and I, our audience here would be real estate agents, right? Or, mm -hmm. or people in sales or in, in, in business for themselves because it can a lot of the concepts apply to everybody. But go into a group like that. LinkedIn is, is another good one. And then see what what's relevant, what's resonating with the people. Somebody may suggest a topic and then it's like comments like this. <coughs> I saw today uh, somebody talking about, hey, if you want to know more about NFTs, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and the multiverse... Multiverse, that's this flash <laughs> and the metaverse and the metaverse, you know, type in the comments and there was like a hundred plus comments. And that tells me my metaverse idea. If you, if you heard it here again, folks, future expert of the metaverse, Jeremiah's J. Man Monero, uh, resonates with people. But then also if in, you're in like a, we love Greece, New York page or anything else where you see mm -hmm. people commenting <clears throat> on things, that's where you get your, your content from. Or a great, a great way to come up with content is, especially if you're talking to the consumer, is look at the Google trends for your area in real estate. What are people searching? Are they searching first-time home buyers real estate? Are they searching home improvements? Like, look at what's trending on the Google Analytics to yeah. find out what people are searching for. And if you see, you know, you're in, you know, go back to Billy because it's Billy in B-Town, that if you see in Billings, people are searching for, Ranches and Billings. I don't even know if there are ranches and Billings. I know there's ranches outside of Billings. There's that like ranches and there's ranches. No, well, no, I meant ranches as in like horse ranches, like okay. cattle, like that type of thing. So it might be that they might be, you know, when you look at the Google Analytics as far as what are the searches, and you go to Google and you, Google how to find out what people are Googling for. <laughs> That's the easiest way of doing it. Right. And it'll tell you what keywords you're looking for. It'll say like it'll, how much over asking will my offer be? What should I do in multiple offers? Offers. How much list price, sale price? You know, you'll you'll get really up to date, and they'll tell you stuff that's even trending in your area. Yeah, and and that, I think that's a great way. And I'll give you a little a little secret Ask <clears throat> that we do sometimes. What was that? Go ahead. No, I'm gonna Google something because I forgot what it, what the site was. But go ahead. <laughs> He's, Jamin's googling, googling. Um, so one of the things that um. Uh, on Wednesday, we do, an, it was part of the Element podcast series, we do a DE construct, a real estate DE or a deconstructed. <clears throat> and honestly, sometimes I don't have a topic at all. But right before it, well, I don't have a topic that I'm set on that we're going to talk about. So right before it, we actually have a role play call. And a lot of times I'll sit on that role play call. And it's one of those where like three or four agents are talking about the same exact thing. And this week when we did it, it was on how to set expectations with your buyers and sellers because a lot of times those buyers being the market that we're in now, agents aren't setting the expectations of like, hey, you're going to have to place a bunch of offers. You're going to have to go X amount of a list. Hey, you're looking for a million dollar property. If you want to pay a million dollar, you're probably going to have to look at an $800,000 property and bid it up to a million. <clears throat> so that was the about setting those expectations and to me just like you can google what people are searching for in your area that that role play call directly before my podcast was it's a great way of this is what agents want to hear about this is what people are talking about you were googling something so i guess you were looking something oh. up to oh you just shared your screen i can't hear you now we can't hear you. You shared your screen and we can't hear you. You can hear me now. I can hear you now. One second. I'm going to add you here. So just keep talking. I'm going to add a little squircle of you. So J-Man just decided to do uh, something off that. I have no idea what that is. What is that? No, that's you. Give that's me a me. second. Well, I don't segue. know what J-Man's doing segue, on, on that. I'm just going to talk to the people. 
I can tell you why the front desk doesn't know how big the bedrooms are, and I have clients and kids that are the bedrooms big enough. Oh, that that was um, this is just a train wreck. That was Tiffany asking about the. Um, it's not a train wreck. Here, putting you over here. Okay. Do you know what you're looking at now, Please. sir? No, I can't see it. It's tiny on my screen. Oh, this is answer the public. So I did a search. There's three, 391 result, results for real estate. These are the top results. And when you look at, uh, if I come in here and I make this a little bit. Okay, so these are when somebody searches for real estate, it ranks them. The darker the green, the more it's searched for. So can real estate make you rich? Can real estate agents make millions? Can real estate agents say no pets? Can real estate agents make you a millionaire? All these other things. Can real estate agents disclose offers? There is 391 ideas here on, on what you can do for live video. That's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. And it's relevant. You know, if this is what people are searching for. If you speak to what people are interested in searching for, more people are going to, you know, listen, if, if, listen, <clears throat> if I was an agent now and I had to come up with live video, I mean, I'm just basing upon the markets that we're in, guys, music playing, just based upon the markets that we're in is it would be, you know, I would talk about multiple offers and what buyers can expect placing multiple offers that, you know, you're going to have to bid. You know, there's a lot of, again, on the role play this morning, <clears throat> one person said, Hey, I had a, a, a listing that went live on Sunday. On Monday morning, we had 137 offers. 137 offers. 50 of them ask price, list price or higher. Do you think that if I was that agent, I would absolutely be having that conversation? That's when we made live videos. Explain Slow to down. buyers. Wait, wait, wait. That go back. Let's go back. 157, you said, and then 50 plus 50 ish were. 50 over asking there was 50 something that were that were over asking so a hundred or so people have no clue yeah <laughs> if you look at it it's two-thirds if you're doing it that way two-thirds of people don't understand the real estate market that they're in <clears throat> so if i was that agent i would i would go live on facebook instagram whatever and say hey jeff stanton douglas elmy you know what we had a listing this weekend that you no know, First open house was on Sunday, went live on Sunday. Monday we had, and go through the whole entire process. And I explained the reason why I'm live now giving you the scenario. So I want to let you know if you're a buyer in today's market, in this market, in my market, this is what you can expect. And go through the process of expect there to be multiple offers, expect there to be overbidding. Again, if you're looking at a fight in some of the areas, if you're looking at a $400,000 home and you know, house is getting bid up. You're probably not going to look at a four hundred thousand dollar list price home. You're probably going to look at a three sixty list price home. Right. Most of my areas, you know, hey, if you're looking at a two million dollar property, guess what? Don't look at a two million dollar list property if you only want to pay two million dollars. You're probably going to have to look at a one point five, one point six, because it's going to get bid up two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and and I think if we're we're giving it here's a good live stream advice, folks. Study, study the market, really be a student of the game, not just your comps, like what's, what has sold or what's currently on the market and what's pending, but you have to go really analyze that data and say, just like Jeffrey said, I know that on average for me in my market, it's around 20% over asking that stuff sells for when it's, when it's competitive. Do you have dogs that sell around asking or do you have some in the rarity that sell below in the like? five percentile that sell below for whatever reason. Yeah. But if I know that number, then I can go in and have a, a conversation with my client and say, look at on average, a note. this property that's a 500 will sell for 600, right? 20% over asking is another mm -hmm. hundred grand over. So if we want to get it, we should, we should be in the 25 to 30%. I like to use percentages rather than, rather than dollar signs. Cause you know, 20% over dollar signs can scare people. Yeah. It's like 20% oh, over or, we got to go a hundred thousand dollars over asking. You know, and and Mike and our.